Hello everyone and welcome to another beer review and today we're about another beer from the vacation and it's a New England IPA and it's love and hate now we tried vacation last time I think it was I think it was an IPA or something like or the pale I can't quite remember and it was actually quite nice what was it life and death or something like that I think it was called this is now love and hate you can see where they're going with this and uh, it's a 7.2% alcohol. I think this is roughly about £3.50 a can. So it is. I'm sure there's some spill on the back, but there's some haze on it. Did I actually do that? Yes, there we go. Get the face in there. Mmm, vacation. There we go. Right, what does it say on it? Oh, Jesus God. Forget crystal clear beers with delicate flavour profiles. Our juicy and unapologetically murky New England IPA is made to leave a lasting impression. Traditionalists will hate it, but to us, it's the one. So there you go. You're saying if you're into traditional beer, you're not going to like this because, hey, they know better. This is, this is the one. This is the beer. And at the end of the day, traditionalists, well, they don't know. They don't know. You know? They're drinking beers that have basically been brewed for decades upon decades and everything else. But here we go. I don't like turning around and say, we're new in the block and we know what we're doing and you just don't. So there we go. Um, does it say anything? It's uh, juicy, hard-hitting, hazy. There you go. An authentic Vermont yeast strain and a big dose of oats work together with plenty of dry hops to create stunning aromas and a silky smooth finish. And it's got Citra Galaxy as well. A brewery is just another factory making a product. It's our people and their passion that make this our vocation. That, that's our kind of tagline. So there you go. 7.2%. It's a 440 ml can. I mean, it was so good, they couldn't actually make it a half-litre can. They're all like, oh, it's a wonderful beer. It's a great beer and that type of stuff. But we really can't give you that extra 60 ml. We just can't really do that. The extra 60 millilitres are just, oh, no, it's just too much. We just couldn't go with that. And then the bigger can, and then if it's in a 24-pack, it's just it's ridiculous but heavy. And it's not a vacation to be able to lift that because we're so weak and woke, and it's just, oh, you know, arseholes. Stop ripping people off. If you're going to charge 350 can, charge 350 can. But at least put it into industry standard size. Give them a half litre. If it's so bloody wonderful, give them the half litre. Stop being cheap and you only use a 440 ml. 440 mils were out in the 80s when everybody was drinking traditional beer. Seriously, see the bullshit you get with some of these bloody companies. Oh, I'd love to, I'd love to be in there in a marketing meeting. God, I'd bitch slap a hell of a lot of them. Anyway, let's get it cracked open and see what it's like. I've got it in a poncy glass because, hey, I'm not going to put it in a traditional glass. It's vacation, you know. <laughs> it's the one, as they say. Right. Anyway, you can put it in any glass you want. Apparently it's hazy as buggery, so you ain't going to see nothing. It's like fucking orange juice. Anyway. Oh, there we go, hey. There we go. Both like orange juice. There we go. Tropicana, anyone? Oh, there we go. Citrus, citrus, and citrus. Any other smells? Oh, no other smells matter. It's just got to be citrus. I mean, at the end of the day, you should be sniffing it and thinking, oh, Minute Maid from McDonald's. Oh. Seriously, it's a bit, it's a bit as Fucking orange juice from Minute Maid from McDonald's. Let me used to get that Minute Maid orange juice. Jesus. It's supposed to be made from concentrate. I didn't even believe that. Jesus, it was dreadful. It smells like this. So yeah, citrus, kind of orangey, little hints of lemon. Yeah, grapefruity. Mm. And then all smells. Yeah. If there is any else smells there, you can't you can't smell it. You don't notice it. It is hazy, as you can see. It is, it's almost like a glass of, of orange juice. 
So let's get wild in and see what this the one really tastes like. Right, okay. Right. Well, it's not as citrusy as they like to make out. It is citrusy. It is a bit hopped off its tits, but I've had worse. I've had a lot worse as a hopped off its tits. But yes, they went hoppy mad. Yes, they're, they're hoppy mad. And uh, yeah, let's break these flavours down. It's not going to take long because it's, it's not a complicated brew. They might try and make out as, but it's not. Let, let's break it down. You start off with kind of a light citrus, so it's like, you know, a light kind of slight tangerines, maybe a hint of blood orange. And as it starts to move from there on to the, the mid-tongue, the, the kind of citrus flavours slightly intensify. So you're getting little hints of lemon coming through. You're getting the more of the kind of... Uh, kind of tangerine, kind of light orange, and some blood orange. So you're getting that kind of mixture. So it's almost like a kind of a citrus uh, fruit bowl, basically. It's like kind of almost a citrus punch. And then as it starts getting near towards the after, so it's starting to get near of the, mid, the rear of the mid-tongue, the end of the mid-tongue, you're just starting to get the bitterness starting, and it's really coming through as the kind of grapefruit bitterness, funny enough. And then it moves on to the kind of aftertaste, and the aftertaste is really just a kind of a, a kind of semi mild grapefruit flavour kind of bitterness, just kind of dissipating. And there you go. So you're, you're getting no malt flavours really. Um, there's no real kind of sweetness to it either, it's just a kind of a bland kind of undertone. So you have this kind of bland, kind of beer undertone running all the way through. And then it just has a layer. Imagine a cake where it's got so much icing on the top of it, you can't actually really taste the cake. You've had that, you know, when you get really thick or really, really sweet icing on it. And you bite into it and you can't really taste the cake. All you can do is taste the icing. Well, that's what that's like. You might, I mean, you could have put hopped in anything. You're not really tasting any beer flavours whatsoever. So it's like, it's all hot flavours. You can't actually taste the beer. There's so much sitting on top of it that you're just really not picking up the kind of general flavours of beer. So there you go. So they can use any shit to basically make it, to be totally honest. Because they were going to hop off his tits anyway. That, the only flavour that counts is hops. It's a, it's a, it's a nicely brewed beer from the point of view of Got an okay mouthfeel. I'm not a big fan of uh, grapefruit bitterness and the aftertaste. I just feel it just kind of lingers there too long. It overstays its welcome. I mean, it's an aftertaste that just goes on for too long. You know, it's like it's an it's been an aftertaste for too long that you think it doesn't know when to actually piss off and just leave you. Um, I mean, I'll, I'll do this as an example. Right? I'll tell you when the aftertaste kicks in. Right, I'll give you the thumbs up. And then I'll give you the thumbs up again once it actually finally buggers off. So here we go. There you go. Nope, there's still a wee bit more good. There we go. That's finally pissed off now. So yes, um, it's not really my kind of style of, of beer because I like the flavour of beer. I like the flavour of hops as well. I have no problem with hops. And I like that idea of having a balance. I like to drink a beer that tastes of beer. Yes, it can have other flavours coming from hops and other. I don't see that. I am more of a traditionalist, but I don't mind people trying something a bit different and maybe trying to kind of, uh, you know, just... 
try and make beer a bit more interesting. I have no problem with that. And I'm quite happy to to give it a go and everything else. And uh, I think, yes, the, the beer industry can't stand still. It has to obviously try something new and experiment. There's nothing wrong with that. But the idea of making a beer that doesn't taste of beer and just tastes of hops, alarm bells are ringing. Who are you making it for? Because you're obviously not making it for beer drinkers. So you... So you're, you're making it for, for what? For people who just like the flavour of hops? Well, that's fine then. Well, you can make that without basically using beer. You can use other beer, because why don't you try and make a, a hop seltzer? I mean, there's a good example, because these, these, these companies think they're innovative. We have a local cider mill close to us, and uh, it's, in the, it's in a place called Cadison just outside of Exeter, and uh, they do a lovely, um, what would you call it, cider, and it's a hopped cider, and it's actually very nice. It just gives it a slightly different edge. Now, you still know it's a cider, you can still taste it's a cider, but it has some nice hoppy tones as well, and for me, that's something interesting in, in taking hops and adding it to other types of drinks, just to give it a, a kind of slightly different edge. So of course, you've got the slightly, they've done it as a kind of a light cider, so you've got a slight sweetness to it, but you've got a nice kind of dry, hoppy finish to it. And it just make it quite unusual, but actually very refreshing and well done. And I think that is more interesting than something like this. Well, I'm going to make beer, but I don't want it to taste of beer. I just want it to taste of hops. And I don't want it to taste of the hybrid hops, so it just tastes of sisters, sisters, sisters and sisters. And then, I'm going to say it's wonderful because, hey, if you like the taste of citrus, citrus and citrus, then this is a drink for you. If you like the taste of beer, don't buy it because it doesn't taste of beer. If you don't really like lots of citrus, citrus and citrus flavours, then don't buy it because that's all it tastes of. So, what would I mark this out of 10? Um... It's almost bordering in the bad orange juice, that's what it's like. Um, what would I give this out of 10? I'm going to give it... I'm going to give it a 3. Because it's not a particularly good New England IP. I've tasted far better, and I've tasted ones with a lot more citrus flavours, and I've tasted ones with less citrus flavours. But I've tasted ones with stronger citrus flavours, but I can still taste beer flavours, and I've tasted ones with less citrus flavours and more of a beer balance to it, and both of them is more preferable to this, it's just, it doesn't taste like beer. And the problem is, I'm doing a beer review, it's sold as a beer, I'm doing a beer review, I like the taste of beer, and I'm not tasting beer, so, yeah, I'm sorry, I'm going to give it a three. A 3 out of 10, because at the end of the day, it doesn't taste of beer. It's just hopped upon hopped. There's no real balance to it or anything like that. It just tastes like a really bad watery orange juice that has a real kind of slightly grapefruitish, bitterish aftertaste. So it's 3 out of 10. Would I recommend it? No. For £3.50 a can for 440 ml, I think you're ripping the piss a bit, to be totally honest. And I can guarantee if you spend £3.50 in any supermarket in the UK or the equivalent of £3.50 anywhere around the world, whether it's America or Europe, you'd probably end up finding a far better beer. So yes, it's 3 out of 10. If that's your vacation, then maybe you start looking for maybe a different one. Because that was pretty crap, really. And for the money you're asking for, you've got a bloody cheek. So, it's 3 out of 10. It's... 7.2%. It's apparently it's a New England IPA, but not a very good one. And it comes in a 440ml can because they can't be bothered to give you the other 60ml to make up to a 500ml can. So they don't believe in the product that much. The cheap bastards. So anyway, thanks for watching. Cheers and bye for now.